For me, I'd say that a good space, like it has to be warm and inviting and unique in some way. I think that that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a certain size, because I think that you can even make a very large space feel warm and welcoming. Native City want to be a place for like inspiration, where people can come together, see what other people are doing, get inspired to see what colors are out there, what yarns are available, and just come up with new ideas to kind of function more as like a studio rather than a shop. No friend, grab the yarn that's in your hand with the needle. That's why you need it tensioned out. And a lot of people do come into the store, and I think they just come in for the camaraderie and just for the uh, for the understanding of this craft in a way they might not have in their life ordinarily. For instance, I'm one who will no one in my social circle or family circle outside of the store knows how to knit or craft in any way. We speak the same language about yarn, about knitting, about crochet, about color, about how yarn feels. And it was the first time that I could really converse. And the first time that I really had like a rapport with other knitters. So at its face value, a knitting shop is just a place where you can get your arts and crafts, you can get your needles, your yarn. But the interesting thing about knitting shops that you'll notice is whenever you go into one, you always see people that are sitting around, hanging out, uh, chatting with their employees, and like just kind of being there as if they're at home and like working on their knitting or just checking out like what's new. It's really just like a comfortable space for people, almost like a second home where they can just like be in their element. Very often people come in, they have very broad questions. They, they're like, I don't know how to make this project. Like what yarn is good for this? And we kind of provide that service just to help people along the way figure out what they need, what they're really looking for, um, what's really gonna make them happy. Yeah. Sorry, let me get that, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Nitty City. My name is Katherine Clark, and I'm the owner of Brooklyn General Store. I've always wanted to create a space that is kind of like you walk in and you immediately let your shoulders down and like start to feel relaxed between the smell and the way it looks and the warmth of the staff. I want people to feel like comfortable and at peace in the space. What makes us, sets us apart from other yarn stores, in New York City at least, is that we also have fabric. There's a huge sewing community also out there, as big if not bigger than knitting community. So we're here for them too. There is this kind of welcomeness to lingering. It's not like you're rushing you in and rushing you out onto the next. Like there's this real like, yeah, take your time, look around, there's so much to take in. If there's a curiosity, this would be a space to kind of feed that curiosity. We're offered this beautiful time for people to come together specifically to create and to have fun and to laugh and to make friends who share the same value regarding making and creating. I don't have to worry about anything, no work, nothing else. Just come and hear other people's stories, see what people are working on. Even like people who haven't even really been doing it for very long can kind of be like, I'm really curious about this. And you can come and there's always people who are willing to show one, but like then there's doors off and offer classes. This becomes a learning space as well, which is just another great way to make friends and build a community. We do free knitting lessons in Bryant Park during the summertime. People always need to start somewhere, and Nitty City has been very strong about teaching people how to knit, getting new people interested, and pushing people forward. We do a men's night after the store is closed, kind of a nitty city after dark, like secret club kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Grant, right? Yes. And Wally. Wally. Richard. Richard. So my mom, growing up, her father, my grandfather, um, actually owned a grocery store in Houston, Texas. It was kind of the hub where family and like friends would come by. They'd uh, do the grocery shopping and also like just get to know each other, chit chat. And where the the adults would like play mahjong after the store is closed, and uh, it just be a place that people um, felt at home. And my mom kind of wanted Nitty City to be very much in that vision, a place for people to like come together. When I first made it for for, for, for like a kid, her, I, I got shiny, uh, like topazy. There's that exchange of ideas, and once again, that appreciation of each other, because the more seasoned knitters, they appreciate a new person is learning this craft, enjoying it, and new knitters can appreciate, oh, there's someone here who's like, I am impressed by what they're making. It's not something I ever thought of. We always want people to feel welcome, that this is a safe place where they can learn, ask questions, get to know the hobby. There's a lot to explore in knitting and crochet. The idea is, you know, we're not just selling this stuff. We want to teach people how to use it. And we want people to be able to access that or learn that it's just out there and like within arms reach. Thanks for watching. Visit notjustahobby.com to learn more about these spaces and subscribe to see our latest episodes.